recorded. Um, good morning, y'all. Um, thank you for being here. Let me just get my screen correct. Everyone, so um, so in the chat, you know, feel free to communicate with everyone. The question is, what are your fun activities or plans this weekend? And also, please don't forget to check in um, bitly slash tw20 dash check in. <clears throat> so good morning, everyone. My name is Gio Mark Panello. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I am the mentorship programs leadership advisor in the Center for Cultural Inclusive Excellence. Um, welcome to the first ever virtual service fair, um, a part of Thunder Week Spring Welcome 2021. So before we begin, I wanted, I wanted to share, share some tips to enhance today's program experience. Live automated captions are available. If the caption did not show up for you automatically, click on the live transcript button on the bottom of your screen to view subtitles. You can also click the view, you can also click to view the full transcript. So if there's something that you might miss, you'll be able to um, stop. And if you'd rather not see the subtitles or the captions, you can also turn them off by selecting hide subtitles. <clears throat> because we have so many participants today, about, there's 29 of us here, I'm hoping we get more, but thank you for being here. Um, we are keeping all participants muted unless given permission by the host or the speakers. If you are seeking a more focused view on your Zoom screen, we recommend that you switch to speaker view instead of gallery view to highlight the person speaking throughout this meeting. You can switch by going to the upper right corner and clicking on the dots to change the mode. This program is also being recorded and will be available on CLS YouTube page in a few days. Thank you. All right, and good morning, everyone. My name is Edwina Hui, and I am the Intercultural Center Leadership Advisor. Um, I get to work with GEO and our uh, Center for Cultural Inclusive Excellence. Um, we would also appreciate it if you could check in um, by using our Google form, which we have posted in the chat. Um, by checking in, you help us keep track of how many students we are serving with these programs. And also, we want to get to know you a little bit more. Uh, thank you for your support and showing up. Also, if you didn't know, we have some Thunder Week swag that we can mail out to students who have not received any yet. This includes an academic planner, sticky notebook, tote bag, and a Highland face mask. So please fill out the form that's also being posted in the chat uh, to provide your address to receive a swag pack. Um, again, please do not sign up if you've already received one from earlier Thunder Week programs. Uh, we would now like to collectively take a moment to acknowledge all indigenous and first people of the land and space in which we live and breathe. For our community at Highland College, we recognize that we are on occupied Duwamish, Coast Salish, Muckleshoot, and Puyallup lands. And we want to thank all relations and tribes today as we prepare to hold space as a community. We recognize that all of us are joining this conversation from different areas. So we also want to invite you to take a moment to reflect and thank indigenous and first people of the land and spaces in which you are coming from. Um, you could visit nativeland.ca as a good place to start in learning about whose land you live on. Thank you. Thank you, Edwina, for grounding us today and um, this morning. Uh, before I introduce all of our organizations for um, joining us here in the virtual space, I would like to give a huge shout out to Autumn and Min, who are the, uh, who pretty much like plan this whole thing. Um, unfortunately, they won't be here because of class um, commitment. You know, they're learning, they're, they're getting their education. Um, <clears throat> but Min and Autumn are part of the service and mentorship engagement consultant. So sh for short, same. They incorporate student mentorship and service learning by providing students community engagement oh. activities, one-on-one peer mentorship program, and different, uh, student leadership opportunities. So we have our ABC. Uh, so we really encourage our students to explore the complexity of intersexing identities while still empowering their authentic selves, building community. We give students opportunities to create meaningful relationships with diverse communities on campus, but also off campus. And lastly, we have our C, stands for Cultivate Leadership. We provide our students with various opportunities to take on leadership roles uh, so that students can explore what is leadership for them. So 
those, um, that's what we do. Under the service and mentorship engagement team, uh, they do peer, one peer-to-peer -peer mentorship program. And then also we try to get a group of students and go to different organization and volunteer there. Unfortunately, we can't do that because of COVID as well, you know, so many other things that we can't do. And that's why I'm really, really grateful that this is something that we can do, you know, um, something we have to be innovative. Um, again, thank you so much for being here for our first virtual service fair. We have five community organizations joining us to talk about their programs and volunteer opportunities um, and ways you can, you can get involved with them. And I will invite them now one by one. Let's see. I believe the, the first one is Elk Run Farm. Awesome. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Maggie Rickman, and I use she, her pronouns. I am the program coordinator for the South King County Food Coalition, um, which is the parent organization of Elk Run Farm. Um, so I'm going to share a couple slides really quick. Let's see. All right. So like I said, we are Elk Run Farm um, and we are a food bank farm that um, grows fresh fruits and vegetables for the food banks across South King County. So this is our service area. Um, we have a massive region that we serve, but we're so honored to be able to um, help provide really great food for all of these different cities. Um, we need an updated map, but we actually added Covington Storehouse. So we now serve um, 13 food banks across South King County with our produce. Um, and we are actually owned and operated by the food banks themselves um, who have acknowledged the great need for really high quality, fresh local food um, that matches the cultural needs of their clients. So that's how Elk Run Farm was born. So we are a nonprofit. Um, and we rely really heavily on volunteers and students for our work. Um, I am one of two staff people that work at Elk Run Farm. Um, and we do most of the work there through our volunteers and through our students. So you can see some of our students here um, from Tahoma High School, uh, which is actually located directly across the street. Um, so we're in Maple Valley and a lot of our, our volunteers come from Maple Valley in the close region, but we actually have volunteers that come from all across King County, sometimes even Pierce County, um, to learn from us, to get their hands in the dirt, um, to get questions answered about gardening. Um, we really see that we do work, but also a way to teach our community, to get kids to learn about where food comes from and to make friendships with our neighbors. So here's some pictures um, of the farm. So we are still operating during the pandemic. Uh, the need for food is greater than it's ever been before. So we really wanted to step up and keep making sure that the freshest, highest quality food um, is available to our clients across South King County. So on the left, you can see our students um, adhering to our social distancing and our mask policy throughout the pandemic. They've been so great. Um, and then, I know it's a little scary to see people standing next to each other, but that's from years past of our high school internship. Um, so young people have been really the core of starting Elk Run Farm through our internship, through our class, through our volunteering. Um, so we love connecting with places like Highland College as well. Um, we have worked with the Sustainable Agriculture Program in the past um, with the food pantry on campus. And we really see Highline as a great connection to our work. So volunteering in 2021 in our, in our pandemic environment is different than in the past, but we still are open to volunteers who want to come and feel safe volunteering in person with us. Um, our volunteers actually participate in all aspects of farming. So that can include transplanting, harvesting, bed preparation, building infrastructure, even site maintenance in general. So if there's something that you want to learn about gardening or farming, you have the ability to do that at Elk Run Farm. Um, if you also want to get involved in the conversation about hunger, about food, about what it means to um, be involved in food justice, that's 
the kind of conversations we're having in the field as well. So in 2021 for spring, we have volunteering on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, at both of those events, we will be participating in, in all of the things listed um, there. Um, and as summer comes around, we will add more dates. So um, I listed our website here. Um, that is the best way to stay up to date about our latest opportunities as well as to RSVP. We um, never had registration before the pandemic. It was very drop-in casual volunteering, but we have asked our volunteers to sign up just so that we can make sure that we never have more than 10 people on site at once. So we're continuing that this year. It went really, really well. So we just ask that you sign up um, ahead of time and let us know that you're coming. Um, we also welcome groups. I should have added this, but we welcome groups. So if there's a class, if there's a club, if there's a company, um, something like that, they can reach out to us outside of this time as well um, and have their own work party. Um, we also give tours, of course, so it don't, uh, doesn't have to be a lot of heavy lifting. Um, we love people at the farm and we have been so devastated to have to limit our uh, community coming on site during the pandemic. So we will be continuing to be very, very safe um, as we move forward, but um, looking for ways to safely engage with our community. Um, I wanted to throw in here, this is also a service opportunity. We are hiring a summer VISTA um, through AmeriCorps VISTA. So this is a service opportunity um, during the summer. So 10 weeks over the summer, um, you would be volunteering full-time um, in exchange for a stipend through AmeriCorps. We have had this program a couple times in the past and I'm just um, blown away by the uh, quality of work that, that we get done with this person, but also by the um, things that we learn from the young people who have been in these positions. So we're so grateful to have this position again through Harvest Against Hunger. Um, and I encourage anybody to share this or apply if you're interested in um, really digging deep um, into the farm. This position will involve 50% farm work and 50% sort of behind the scenes capacity building. So if you're interested in um, learning about how nonprofits work, how decisions are made and planning happens on farms and in nonprofits, this will be a great opportunity for that as well as um, farming in the peak season. Great, and then I just put my contact information here. I can throw it in the chat as well. Um, again, I'm Maggie, this is my phone number. You can text or email or text or call me um, or email me here and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you, Maggie. Um, so you don't have to uh, talk to our organizations later after everyone has gone. We'll open up breakout rooms where you can have one-on-one -on -one with them as well. So thank you again, Maggie. Look, I want to go there, bring a friend, you know, LPT, Leadership Programming Team, what's up? Um, next, we have our South King Tool Library. That's me. Yeah, I want to go volunteer there, too. That looks amazing. Uh, I'm glad to meet you, Maggie, too, because I feel like we have I'm trying to give you the same presentation, but well, no, I'm just kidding. We're, we're kind of just going after that inspiration. Oops, that inspiration we all have, right? Me, sorry. I forget how to do things when I'm. Not that one. All right. So currently I am in a couple of these slides. Uh, my name's Amanda Miller. I am the executive director of the South King Tool Library. Um, SKTL or Skittle for short, if you would like to throw some Skittles our way, we always appreciate that. Oh, did I just not do the right thing? That's cool. Hold on, what's happening? You guys can't see the presentation, right? Well, this is indicative of how the tool library has gone. We have gone through a lot of process to get a tool library to the region. And I'm really happy to be with you today. Um, I won't give you the whole spiel about how we got started, but 
Uh, if you haven't heard of a tool library before, then I'm very glad you're with us because tool libraries have been around since the 70s. There are hundreds all over the world, uh, international movement, um, uh, fostering the sharing economy, um, uh, trying to make a difference for waste reduction. And uh, in March of last year, we finished building our one of a kind building in federal way to bring uh, these services to South King County. Um, there are seven tool libraries in King County, but nothing south of the airport that speaks to the underserved populations that live there. Uh, most socially, uh, socioeconomically diverse region, um, culturally diverse regions and uh, equitably diverse regions in the, in the region. So uh, removing that barrier of tool ownership uh, empowers folks and I am happy that we have so many willing and amazing volunteers in our community and that you guys have considered um, adding to that list, uh, joining your, our, our ranks of volunteer community. Um, the three principles that kind of embody the South King Tool Library are what I have up for you next. So we foster this idea of sharing tools and ideas, uh, but tools can really mean a variety of things. Maggie, hearing your presentation made me think, you know, gosh, we need to work because we uh, promoted this idea of food preservation and we're doing, gonna do a food preservation series in the uh, spring. Well, that's where we are now, coming months. So we have vacuum sealers and dehydrators and we even have a freeze dryer. Uh, we'll be working in the coming weeks to do a um, presentation with the, uh, Tacoma Center for uh, Food Preservation. And that's just to really bring the all of the ideas that what a tool is, how we can create equity through their access. So um, I'm sitting right now in the tool library, staring at saws, smelling sawdust, uh, sanders, pressure washers. Um, really the idea of what a tool is, we've kind of pushed the limits. We even have things like sewing machines. And um, when you, get into the libraries, you see this going everywhere. So training and education obviously go hand in hand with the tool uh, access. So offering training to anyone that is interested in operating a tool, first of all, uh, safety and having that hands-on experience is really invaluable. Um, tools are something that we all have had to experience probably one way or another, um, whether reluctantly or not. It is a matter of just understanding that they're just a, a thing, you know, just like your phone can be very intimidating when you get it the first time, uh, getting a, a drill or a saw in your hands can feel really uh, intimidating. But once you get the hang of it and, and start using those things, you get this other aspect of our, um, our culture here, which is the empowerment aspect. And I love this picture because he has a cape on and he built a birdhouse. So he knows what's up with that empowerment aspect, being able to impact the world around you, literally uh, changing and building a better world. So, you know, I'm not gonna say that tool libraries are the ultimate solution to all of the world's problems, but definitely one of them. Um, we love this idea. And of course, you're probably wondering exactly how you can connect with us. Um, we are rather ambitious for a tool library here in South King County, but we are trying to pivot like everybody, COVID. Uh, we've adapted some other models, brought in other waste reduction themes, gotten Zoom savvy. Um, so we are looking for support kind of in a lot of different realms. Uh, tools are just one thing, but you have interest in outreach and communication, um, serving the diverse communities that really are reflected in South King County. Uh, we consider our service region North Pierce County as well. Uh, so we welcome folks from really wherever you are to, to connect with us. Uh, recycling and waste reduction. And I'm, I'm proud to announce that we are being acknowledged by King County as leaders in waste reduction with a Green Globe Award this year. So uh, considering we only opened in June of last year, it's been pretty impactful uh, to our community. We also have been operating uh, repair cafes for the past several years as we were building our building. So the, um, 
the, the pivot with those has been uh, drive through events and more educational resources. And we're looking at a model now where we'll be doing topical uh, repair summits. So something like fixing your car or maintaining your car, uh, or maybe even household items like kitchen appliances or uh, even your house, you know, how to insulate your windows. Um, also getting into the gardens, into the yards. We are doing a green living series with the city of Federal Way now. Uh, we just did a container gardening class, which will be up on our Facebook page uh, as soon as I get off of this conversation with you and I put it up there. Uh, so uh, we really see the application of the tool library from start to finish uh, in all aspects of your day-to-day -day life. You know, there's uh, educational aspects that are just indispensable when it comes to uh, feeling that empowerment aspect. Uh, we are a mostly women-run organization, which is also irregular for tool libraries, but uh, we are tenacious. We are not the, the most efficient or the biggest or the prettiest, but gosh darn it, we're probably the loudest tool library and definitely make an impact where we can. So uh, I don't remember what my next slide is. Oh. Yeah, this is a good one. I just want you all to think about how you want to change the world, uh, because that's all any of us really want to do is is make the day better. And the the lovely quote from Mahatma Gandhi of "Be the change you want to see" is pretty intrinsic in what we do. So, um, really fostering again that sense of community, that sense of um, you know sharing, training, and empowerment will help us accomplish all of those things. So. Uh, we're looking for volunteers regularly scheduled, kind of cut my website off at the bottom there, but um, just again, like Maggie said, kind of logistically coordinating with us uh, to make sure that we can safely schedule folks. But Monday is 10 to 2, Wednesdays, Wednesdays 2 to 6, and Saturdays from 10 to 2 as well. Or again, a lot of the opportunities we have are remote and we'd love to hear your ideas about how you want to see this service interact with your community. So uh, I really appreciate the Highline team and your, your intros um, made me really nostalgic for uh, the fact that those did not exist when I went to college and that that is a really valuable asset to our community. So thank you for that. Um, I think that was it for me, but I look forward to all of your questions and I'll be sure to put my information into the chat uh, so we can all be together. <laughs> I didn't see the comments until now. Thank you so much, Amanda. I will see you on Saturday, not this Saturday though, cause you know, I'm gonna get my vaccination. So next weekend. <laughs> awesome. I'll be too sore tomorrow. Um, thank you again. Next, do we have uh, American Red Cross here? Yes. Hello, good, good morning, almost afternoon actually. But hi everyone. Uh, my name is Cindy Halston. I use she, her pronouns. I am a volunteer recruiter with the American Red Cross. So thank you so much for inviting me to this wonderful event um, and with Highline College and all you wonderful students out there. I'm going to also share my screen and use um, a PowerPoint as a visual for this presentation. So here we go. All righty. Okay. So I'll keep the slide deck on the left just to remember where I am. So. I first want to introduce um, a little bit more background on myself. Um, so I, like I said, I'm a volunteer recruit, recruitment specialist with the Red Cross. So I originally started as an AmeriCorps member and I was working, um, I was serving with the, it's our program that serves the military community and veterans and military family members. Um, I was also helping with the international services program, but now I'm on the side of our volunteer services. And what that is, is it's sort of like the human resource department, but specifically we work with our volunteers. And I first wanna start with sharing with you all of our, our mission statement. And this is what we do every day. Um, and I always keep this top of mind to make sure all my actions reflect this. Um, we prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies, and we mobilize the power of our volunteers and the generosity of our donors. And we have seven core principles. Um, I won't list them all right now just because they're here um, in a matter of time, but um, these are our seven core principles that we use for um, all of our work as well as all of the International Red Cross Societies. 
And then I do want to just go over some of our services. And in this, this is the volunteer opportunities that we have um, within the programs. Um, so our programs go into Biomed, uh, which is you know our blood drive team. Um, you probably know a bit about or heard about our disaster services programs and how we respond to large scale disasters. I'm going to go into that more because that's actually where our um, currently our open volunteer opportunities are, are within our disaster services at a local level that focuses on small scale disasters. And then, like I mentioned, when I was in AmeriCorps, I was a member within service through armed forces. And then we also have international services programs. And this is just, oopsie, there we go. This is just a little bit of our impact. Um, I wanna highlight this one on the top right. It says 190 times a day, Red Cross volunteers help a family affected by a house fire or a disaster. And specifically the house fire is something I'm gonna chat with you all a little bit more. Um, and in my breakout session, I'll, I'll go into things like that in a little more detail. But um, this is my favorite, uh, picture, get a piece of action with a bunch of, because of my favorite food. But um, I just wanted to cover this too on the right side. It shows the region that we cover. I am part of the Northwest region, and this covers all of Washington, as well as this little sliver of the panhandle of Idaho. So some of our top priorities with um, due to the COVID pandemic, most of our volunteer roles have been moved to virtual. Um, however, there are some that are uh, necessary. They have to be in person, like blood drives. Um, but other than that, we have been very fortunate where we've been able to transition our programs to virtual. Um, I know a lot of volunteers love doing it in person. I like being in person, but at least we can still use our services and provide those services to our community and, and get that across and help people. So within our disaster services, um, I mentioned that we do have open opportunities um, in kind of two areas, it's preparedness and then also in the response category of disaster. We have an opportunity where we actually educate the community on home fire safety and uh, we're doing this virtually. So or people in the community sign up for um, getting educated and then our volunteers will set up a phone call with them and educate them about home fire safety. Do they have an escape route? Um, to how many you know smoke alarms do they have? How often have they checked the batteries? Just things to prepare and save lives, um, save lives and try to prevent lives lost due to home fires. And then on the response side, we also have a team that responds to local home fires. And a lot of that is kind of like social work and also providing um, families that have been affected by home fires financial services. So we can, you know, if they, if they um, left the house and they have nothing left now, we'll provide them with, you know, a toothbrush, we'll provide them with money so they can stay at a hotel if they need to, um, things like that. And then I will wanna just switch down here to some reasons to volunteer. Um, I really congratulate all of you for attending this, this event through your college. I think this is a wonderful step to see what's out there in your community right now due to the COVID pandemic and what how things have transitioned and what's out there really. But um, this is some things I like to highlight is just you can explore. It's a great time to explore your interests. Um, you can really find something that reflects on your, your, you know, your major or something that you want to do the rest of your life, right? This is a great time to explore that. Um, meeting new people, uh, hopefully new friends one day, and then you get to do good and help your local community. And then this is just more reasons to volunteer, like resume building, things like, you know, learning, there's leadership opportunities, public speaking abilities, things like that. Um, and then I like this quote. Um, there was another quote shared earlier that I really liked, but this is, this is a good one with by Mr. Rogers. Um, when I was a boy, I would see scary things in the news. My mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. That is, it is so true um, with the Red Cross. Um, in any nonprofit, you, you're really involved with the people who are helping um, and you all rock. So that's all I wanna go into for right now. And I'm looking forward to the rest of the presentations and the breakouts and the stop sharing. All right, thank you. Thank you, Sydney. Oh my gosh, I just realized I don't know anything about like fire prevention, like in my house. I don't even know if we have, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> we have fire extinguisher, like one, but that's about it. I don't know if I need more. Oh um, my gosh. 
I'll have you sign up for one of our presentations, okay? <laughs> yeah, please. Thank you so much. Um, and then I'll invite open doors for multicultural families to the stage, virtual stage. Well, thank you. Uh, Sabrine, would you bring up our slideshow? And I would say nobody beats Mr. Rogers, first of all, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everybody loves Mr. Rogers and um, dearly for me as well. Yeah. Okay. So for those of you who haven't met us, Open Doors for Multicultural Families actually is locally in Kent. So it's very close to uh, Highline Community College. We also have staff on board who is currently attending Highline College. And that's how we get connected with you guys as well here. Um, open Doors for Multicultural Families, we are dedicated to serve linguistically and culturally diverse individuals who have interfaith with uh, intellectual or developmental disabilities and their families. And for us, we really welcome everybody. So we have a strong mission that we want to engage and also partner with these individuals and their families who come from the diverse cultural backgrounds like the BIPOC community, the Black Indigenous and people of colors particularly. And we use what we so-called a cultural brokerage model, which is that simply put it is that we hire people who speak the language of the families we try to serve and they share a similar cultural backgrounds. So when they come together, families are able to access to our service easily by using their own language, doesn't have to go through interpreter if our staff are able to speak the language. And uh, we, are, we have a strong values in family-centered program. And so families are and also individuals who have disabilities are the drivers of our program and services. And it's really based on their needs. Then we will provide a specialized programming. And uh, you know, through, throughout our experiences serving so many diverse cultural backgrounds individuals, we realize that unless the system is going to change uh, individually, we can make an impact. However, those those root caused continue to exist. So as a result, we also started to do our advocacy uh, effort to make changes um, several years ago. And Open Doors for Multicultural Families was, was born out of my home actually <laughs> in 2009. So we consider still, uh, it's kind of new, but not too new organization. Um, and currently we have, uh, around about 50 staff and together we speak about 27 different languages. So it's a very diverse uh, group of people we work together. Um, you know, during the summer, we usually provide good, you know, good outdoor activities, but during the COVID-19 now, we are not able to do that. But overall, we have several different programs. And for some of you, if you are familiar with developmental disabilities, uh, such as autism, or you see people who have cerebral palsy or Down syndrome, some of them, they are more visible, but a lot of them are actually uh, invisible. So we are talking about a lot of invisible um, disabilities, for example, learning disabilities, or sometimes people who have hearing impairment, you, you don't see that, right? And the disability field we are serving are pretty broad and uh, if we look at special education services in school, students who ever qualified one or two or any of the special ed services are the population we focus to serve. And it's a, we, we use this life approach, lifespan approach, because developmental disability impact a person's lifelong. And myself is actually a parent. I have a son who has autism. And that's what brought me into this field to, to start to serve, start to work with many diverse families. And currently our lifespan approach programs, including early learning from zero to five, we support families. We do, um, we do the early learning play and learn programs. We do different mental screening. We also partner with other agencies to provide trainings and supporting other agencies to become more uh, culturally competent in order for them to better serve the diverse population. 
And then for the youth wise, we have a specialized program for our youth, such as friendship circle to increase the in each individual youth, their confidence, their different, their social skills, and they will learn to, to develop strong uh, personal uh, self-esteem and, and also embrace their own identity, including their cultural identity, but also including their disability identity as well. Be because we also have seen that many youth who have come to our program due to the different cultural aspect in their community, they value disability differently. So we try to make sure that our youth will learn to, uh, um, to have much more well, uh, social, social emotional development to well beings. And that's the area that we strongly focus on our youth. And then when they are a little bit older, we started to do the employment, pre employment training, prepare them go to college or preparing them go to the workforce. And then once they are adults, we will have adult programs that continue to teach them, give them opportunity to learn and also socialize with other people who share similar challenges. Um, and overall, we have a program to support family, uh, parents, particularly when their kids are older or younger or you know when they're a teenager, it doesn't matter. So it's really at different stages of a person's life, there are something that we can offer to the families we serve. Um, so every person who come to us, we will assign with them a so-called a family support specialist or a case manager, it depends on the program that, that fit in and we will be able to support them. And the, besides that, we also have the, um, the homelessness prevention program and also assistive technology programs that we are running. And on top of that, we also have this uh, advocacy and civic engagement program. So we do have a variety of program and that are all based on the family's needs that we created these programs for, for them. And we, we have so many different uh, opportunities for people who want to volunteer with us or do the internship with us. And how we do it is that we will meet with you first. Um, next slides, please. And so, so Sabrina is our fundraising development coordinator anybody can contact her and then we will send you our online application form and based on your interest then we figure out what are the things we can offer to you and make sure that you feel like your goals are met as a volunteer and we put volunteer to work very much <laughs> We, we don't ask our volunteer to offer to, to bring coffee to people or something like that. That's not what we do at Open Doors for Multicultural Families. It's a very um, a collaborative uh, environment and we work together um, and we really require our volunteer to be the same level as our staff in many ways and we support them as well. So it's a, uh, we, we believe that our volunteer is equally important as our, our, our staff because only when we all come to work together, we can make sure the community we serve are well, um, they, they can receive quality services, that, let me put it that way. And so Sabrina, you wanna share with them what you do and just really depends on all kinds of things that you wanna do. We Likely we might be able to match you with something. And currently for COVID, uh, we do work online mostly, but there are sometimes we we provide a lot of uh, support to many families we serve. Uh, we serve more than 2,000 individuals last year, just only for the COVID support. Uh, we regularly we provide rental assistance, food food assistance, and other any kind of uh, assistance. Um, so anybody who want to volunteer and and want to work with a very diverse community staffing wise, uh, that's what we offer to the individuals who, who are interested in this field. So Sabrina, I'll turn the time to you, yeah. Yes, 
Hello, everyone. Uh, as Ginger mentioned, I'm the development coordinator for Open Doors. Uh, my number one goal is to handle the fun fundraising aspects of Open Doors. Um, that includes running fundraising events, um, social media campaigns, and also uh, being being responsible for the uh, volunteer aspect. Um, we want to make sure that uh, not only are you serving us, but we're serving you to the best um, uh, best of your abilities. We recognize that this is an opportunity for you guys to develop and learn new skills. And um, Open Doors is really awesome in, in a way where we work in all aspects of the disability community from early learning all the way up to um, homelessness prevention and advoc ad, um, advocacy change. So if you have an interest in for, for example, uh, legislation or want to want to help me run a fundraising event, you you're, you're able to do so. So um, we really want to encourage you guys that if you have any interest at all, look at our website, um, check our ch check my send an email to me or you have my contact information right below. Um, again, we're going to be breaking up in teams, so I'll be able to answer your questions more individually. But I want you guys to be aware of the opportunity of being able to service your, your interest based through um, Open Doors. All right, thank you so much, Open Doors. So if you know, if you wanna volunteer and maybe if you know on a different language, feel free to like hit them up. I definitely will because I want to use my other skills, my, my other language skills. So um, last we have homoglobin. I'm, I hope I'm, yes, I'm volunteering for every organization today <laughs> after my COVID um, uh, vaccination. Um, next we have homoglobin. I, I hope I said that correctly. Yes, you did. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Olivia Delgado, and I'm the director of campaigns with Homoglobin. We're a student led organization dedicated to LGBTQ plus advocacy. And so right now I'm a junior college student in Connecticut, so East Coast. I'm studying public health and minoring in human rights, social justice. So everything that we do here is very much oriented around that. Um, in my position, I do a lot of political work regarding candidates in state, territorial and national offices. Um, so just bear with me while I pull these slides up really quickly. Um, so I could tell you a bit more about what we do. Um, share. Can everyone see? Perfect. Okay, so um, this is our slogan, which is we aim to achieve a higher degree of equality for the LGBTQ community in healthcare and education through informing the public and influencing policymakers. And so who we are at our core, we're a remote nonprofit social welfare organization aimed at achieving equality for the LGBTQ plus community in all aspects of society, mainly education and healthcare. So right now, um, many gay and bisexual men are not allowed to donate blood according to the FDA. And this is our core mission to try and change that. So our nation's public school system kind of contributes to this as well. And we still see like LGBTQ issues routinely undervalued and oftentimes ignored. So our organization is actively lobbying policymakers and educating the public on these issues. And we've been asking for help from people like you. We would be so appreciative if you could volunteer some of your time with us in the future. And if you've got a tight schedule, consider sharing this opportunity with your friends too. We have branches in about 16 or 17 states, including Washington and Virginia is where our um, headquarters are, but we are all like remote, most of our, um, National directors are in Virginia, though. We're going to skip that. In the United States of America, there we go. sexually active gay and bisexual men cannot donate blood. Is that As volume going through, through for you guys or no? More inaccessible to males. And less than 10% of people have been in LGBT. It's okay. We can skip it if it's not coming through. So some of the perks of volunteering with Homoglobin are one, volunteer hours. We can provide opportunities for unlimited volunteer hours and we will work with you to complete them. Um, two, internship opportunities. If you're interested in interning with one of our national directors, you can contact me or anyone else for more information. I'll provide that in the Zoom chat after this. 
Three, a letter of recommendation. We are always willing to provide letters of recommendation for our most passionate and productive volunteers. So if that's an incentive for you, and if you also want to use that as a resume booster, feel free to do so. And for leadership experience, if you're interested in any kind of leadership position in our organization, um, depending on our vacancies and your interests, we kind of work with you and coordinate that as well. If you're ready and like willing to take on such more of a commitment than the average volunteer. And so we have a lot of teams within our organization because of the broad nature of our mission. And so even though I handle the policy and advocacy side, that's more towards politics and campaigns, your volunteerism doesn't have to be in that field. We have many opportunities to take meaningful action in areas like digital and social media, including blogging, um, event planning, finance, HR and diversity, public relations, partnerships, recruiting, and campus ambassadorship. And so what you could expect with volunteering with us is that we are a lateral organization where everyone's inputs, opinions, and skills are welcomed and respected. Our organization consists largely of students and youth advocates. And so we still encourage all people, regardless of their level of experience, to get involved and to talk to others and learn. We have a very flexible organizational structure, and we will definitely work with you to accommodate your needs or your class schedule. You can always reach out to any employee or director at any level for assistance to share any ideas that you might have or have some feedback or give some feedback. We also really pride ourselves on the fact that we have clear and consistent tasks with very reasonable deadlines for all of our volunteers, if that's something that draws you to our organization. And we also have really fun and upbeat coworkers who are so passionate about social advocacy and personally inspire me every day. So um, I would just say that Homoglobin is a great place if you're looking to get started in LGBTQ plus social advocacy, or if you want to, again, learn more. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact us at homoglobin.campaigns at gmail.com. And I also linked the website on the slides here. I'm going to escape that and come back to the Zoom where I can share some more with you guys. Okay, perfect. Um, let me pull up the introduction for you. I have a few links that I want to share with you guys, especially with um, in order to like gauge interest and things like that. You can move on for me now. Um, thank you for thank you all for listening. I'm going to put it in the chat now. All right, thank you so much, um, Olivia, for um, being here. And I know that we are running short on time, but I do want to be able to like, I want to be able to provide space for everyone to connect with each other. So we're just going to do our closing remarks now and then going to open the breakout rooms and people can like stay here as long as they want. Like we'll be here for a while. Uh, again, thank you so much for Thank you all so much for being here. We really, really appreciate you. Like I'm about to volunteer to each one of y'all, like maybe once a month, I don't know. Um, you know, I wanna be safe too. Uh, but yeah, I definitely will connect with you all. If you are still here, feel free to, please, 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 actually not feel free to, but please um, fill out our feedback form, bit.ly slash TW20 dash feedback. Um, this will help us kind of like gauge like what we need to do um, for our next events. Thank you so much again. And I think Edwina has an uh, announcement. Yeah, um, just a couple of announcements. And so um, later on at the end of this month, we have um, in, this, in our Center for Culture and Inclusive Excellence, um, we have our programming week, which is Unity Through Diversity Week, AKA Unity Week. Um, and so throughout this week, it, we really focus on exploring um, the rich intersections of identity. Um, we have some really cool speakers that are going to be uh, visiting our virtual space. So students, um, community, this is also open to you as well. Um, please join us. And if you want to learn more or actually look at our lineup, um, that link is being posted in the chat right now. Um, and as, as some folks may know, we are going to be hiring for next year's student leadership team um, within our departments. And so students who are going to be enrolled through next year, if you're looking for more ways to get involved while also getting paid, please, please, please consider 
um, looking up all the different jobs and positions that are open now. Our applications close on May 3rd, and that link is also being posted in the chat. And of course, if you're on social media, follow our CLS and CCIE pages. Um, we are on both Facebook and Instagram. So this is where you can keep updated on um, all the programs that are happening week to week. And also, um, if you're more like a person who wants to um, be communicating through email newsletter, um, please fill out this form that's also going to be posted in the chat momentarily. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm closing out, but I realize that I haven't had a chance to introduce myself yet. So hi, my name is Amy Bergstrom. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Programming and Marketing Leadership Advisor in the Center for Leadership and Service. Um, and I oversee the organization of our Thunder Week program in partnership with all of our amazing teams in CLS and CCIE. And so as this is the last program of our Thunder Week Spring Welcome, I just wanted to thank everyone who has been part of our programs this week. Um, we really hope this was an energizing and helpful way for you to start your spring quarter, finding ways to connect with other students and connecting with all the ways you can get involved at Highline and in the community. Um, Thunder Week is just the start of a great spring quarter with the center, so we hope that we'll be able to connect with you um, throughout the various programs, kind of like Edwina shared, we have Unity Week, but we also have tons of other things coming up. So we hope you will um, find a place to get plugged in this quarter. And of course, we all hope that we'll be able to connect in person sometime soon. Um, but in the meantime, we hope that you have a great quarter. And I've borrowed the statement that Geo always shares that we hope you stay warm, hydrated, moisturized, and sanitized. Um, but I'm going to pass it back to Gio to uh, give you instructions for the breakout rooms. Thank you, Amy. Definitely stay moisturized because, you know, it will be sanitized. Alcohol is called dry skin. So please, please put lotion on. Um, now we're going to open, uh, Amy will open the breakout room. So everyone will have the opportunity to move around each room. Um, feel free to move around. Uh, we'll keep the, we'll keep this Zoom meeting open as long as there are people here um but yeah thank you so much amy um uh, if you just like open that there you go um feel free to do club hop in or organization hop in <laughs>